This video will kind of take the next step after getting the SICK IO-Link Master uh, integrated into uh, Logix Designer uh, Rockwell software. Um, it's going to take the next step of connecting a sensor and understanding what some of that process data uh, can be coming uh, over the line from the sensor. So we'll assume everybody's watched the video on how to get connected. They've gotten a valid IP address. They've uh, named their device. Mine is named Jake is awesome. Uh, <clears throat> and they've gotten it connected. Now let's see what some of these numbers actually mean. So uh, the first thing I would do is I would take this part number 6053255 and put that into our website sickusa.com 605 uh, shoot sorry 6053255 uh, you enter in that that uh, part number on the website we'll go to downloads we'll go to literature and then we want our operating instructions for this uh, device uh, this will actually walk through uh, probably many of the steps you did in the last video, but uh, the most important thing that we want to see is uh, page 25, our input data. So this is the actual data that is coming from each of the ports. If we look at our IOLink master, there's eight ports uh, that can send IOLink data to us. This input data map or uh, table tells us where that information is going to show up. So we've got port 0, it will show up in byte 8 to 55 in our input data. Uh, <clears throat> looking back at our IO-Link master, this, so our ports start right here with port 0, then it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, and then on the other side, 4, 5, 6, 7 is the bottom right corner. Uh, what I want to look at, uh, I've got a couple other sensors connected, but in this video we're just going to focus on the KTS connected to port 2. So <clears throat> looking back at our uh, data table, port 2 starts in byte 104, and it can uh, use information all the way up to 151. So if we go back to our Rockwell software, we'll go to our controller tags. So we've got our controller tags, and we'll navigate to our IO-Link master, called it Jake is Awesome. We'll go to our input information, <clears throat> input data, expand that and this is each of those bytes of data so 0 to 7 was for standard input output and then uh, 8 to 55 is port 1 all the way up moving on to port 2 is 104 all the way up to whatever 155 uh, 104 the KTS I happen to know for process data really only uses two bytes so it's using 104 this information right here and 105 this information right here so just looking back at our video now, uh, if I put an object underneath the KTS, you'll see our data change. So we've got data jumping through here. Uh, we, can, we can see ones and zeros changing. Uh, maybe that's important to you, maybe it's not. Uh, we've got to kind of understand what the next step is in what each of these data points mean. So how do we do that? <clears throat> well, there's a couple of things we have to do. The first one I would do is I would go back to the web browser. This allows us to easily troubleshoot and make sure that we're still seeing information and then we can go back to Rockwell and see exactly where it lives. So to access the web browser, it showed us in the last video, we just enter the IP address in any uh, web browser that you've got on your computer. Uh, <clears throat> my IP address, you can see 192.168.250.101. Enter that IP address, it'll pull up the IOLink um, master that we're connected to. <clears throat> The other video goes through each of these screens. I'm interested in device properties. So under device properties, it will automatically go to the first IO-Link device you have connected uh, over here in the bottom right uh, and pull in information on that device. So just a quick example, we can go to another port. If I click on that other port, it'll pull up other information on whatever's connected to that port. But this video will focus on the KTS, so we'll start there. So we've got our KTS. We can pull in product name, product ID. It says C index 219, so we have to reference another index to pull in the part number. Uh, product text, that's just a label. Serial number, hardware, software. And then this is actually that process data. These two are uh, those, those uh, <clears throat> process data bytes that we saw back in the Rockwell software, 104 and 105. That's what we're seeing right here. Um, but let's get a real data map. Instead of looking at the master here, let's get the real data map on the KTS. The best way to do that is to take the part number to our website and then under the downloads it'll be available. 
So to find the part number, we can certainly look physically at the device and pull a part number off, but since we're connected through iLink, why don't we pull the information there? So product ID is our part number. It says C index 219. We can read index 219. We enter in 219, always starts with sub index zero. We apply it, we're reading the service data of the device, pulling that from us, and it's giving us our product ID. It gives it to us in hex, so we have to convert that to text. I'll just do that through uh, hex to text uh, to ASCII converter. Uh, I chose a second option Google gave me, but you go ahead and throw in your hex, convert it to ASCII text, and there's our part number. So I'll copy that part number, take it back to, sorry, take it back to our website, enter in that seven digit part number, it'll pull up our KTS, all the information you might need on the KTS, response time, switching frequencies, those kinds of things, but it'll also give us our literature and our data map, uh, our process data map. So we'll go to downloads, the first option is literature, if our connection goes too slow I do have it open already so here is actually the process data map yeah we're still waiting on so uh, going back to the website you'll go to uh, the part you'll go to downloads you'll go to literature and then you'll see a little bit of a preview that this is called operating instructions but you'll see a preview of a document that looks like this this is our data map of the information that's coming over IOLink this is actually very, very valuable. It might be a little confusing to people, but it is quite valuable. So this is uh, the top here physical layer is essentially how, uh, how we're communicating and what we're talking to. Then process data is the information that the sensor sends uh, continually, all the time. Every, every update cycle, this data is being updated. Um, <clears throat> process data comes continuous. That's going to be your switching output, your... Uh, current read levels, those kinds of things. Then service data is all the other acyclic data that you can request if you would like to have that. So uh, part numbers, model numbers, those kinds of things, uh, set points, uh, that's going to be under service data. So let's look back at process data. I mentioned we've got byte 0, byte 1 here. Uh, going back to our logic software, our byte 0 and byte 1 are in the IOLink master, byte 104 and byte 105. So 0 and 1. So each of these ones and zeros transpose to these uh, fields here, these bits. So the first eight, all of byte zero, correspond to the measurement value of emission color. So measurement of value of emission color are all of these guys. And then also continued into the next byte, uh, two bits uh, refer to measurement value of emission color. So if we wanted to get the actual readout, we would start uh, right here and enter in in our binary numbers uh, to actually see what we would see on the sensor face. Uh, <clears throat> we'll start with Q output and then I'll show you how to do that. So moving on byte byte one, which in the iLink master it's byte 105 because we're in port two. Uh, we've got emission color, we've got quality of run of alarm, and then our Q output is the very first bit in the second byte. So let's go back to our IOLink master, we're looking at bytes 104 and 105. The very first bit, this one right here, is our Q output. So if I go back to the physical sensor here and put my target, this black target underneath the sensor, we'll see that go high to a number one, go low to a zero. Back and forth, we can see that very quickly. Pretty easy to use. You don't need to do any add-on instructions if you just need that Q output or you want to do some of the work yourself. So then the next two we knew were quality of run alarm, QOR alarm, I'll just note that. And then the next three were uh, <clears throat> the emission color. color. So emission color, that's this 0, 1, 0 is our emission color. Uh, then uh, moving on from there, the last two and all of these at the at the first byte are our read value so if we do an example here I'll just wake up the sensor we have a value on the sensor of 403 404 so all of these guys are are pertaining to that actual number uh, they're just showing up as a binary number and we have to convert that back to a decimal and so the way we convert that is starting here because as we go back to our KTS 
uh, <clears throat> explanation or our data map, it starts with uh, spot 15 or bit, byte zero spot, the last spot available, last bit available. Uh, so then we'll enter in, going back to our logic software, enter in uh, starting right here at this bit seven, starting zero, we'll enter that in and then we'll start at the bottom and run up again. So we'll go zero one one zero zero one zero zero one one. And we'll convert that to a decimal being 403. So you can do that manually in your software if you want to. Uh, mission color will do the same thing, 010. Zero, zero. So go zero, oh, sorry, make sure we're doing binary. Zero, 010, zero. convert that to a decimal, it's a number two. Two pertains to the emission color we're doing. We're seeing blue, so if we go back to our KTS instructions, uh, under the service data, emission color does show up here in process data, but the definition is under service data. Uh, you could just search for emission color, otherwise I'm pretty sure it's 208. Yep, there it is. 208, emission color, 0 is red, 1 is green, 2 is blue, which is exactly what we're seeing. So uh, as we see changes, uh, we could we could get that to change to uh, to a different number. We could see our values change. So as I move a black target underneath the sensor, we want to see what our reading is for a black target. Uh, we'll go back to our converter binary. Our new number now is 00011111 and then 10. So we'll do that one more time. 11111 one, 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 and 10. Read that to a decimal, 126. On black, we see 126. On white, we see 403. There's our differences, and we can see those values live. If you want this to be uh, maybe a little bit easier, a little bit clearer to use, you can utilize a uh, function block or add-on instructions that we do offer on our website as well. Uh, I'll show you that in another video, and I'll show you walking through those steps with a couple other sensors uh, in the next video. So thank you for watching.